What's good? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. After what seems like, uh, I don't know, forever, we're back with another podcast. Uh, and this time we have uh, we have a different guest. Uh, he's, uh, he's pretty big in the Hadith community in North America. Uh, his name is Mufti Muhammad Ibn Munir. Uh, I think he's based on the East Coast. I don't know the exact city. But assalamu alaikum, Mufti. Welcome to the show. Wa alaikum assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Thank you for having me. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. Thank you for your time. Uh, so uh, since we don't have too long, I guess we'll just uh, jump into it. We'll first part. We'll focus on. Uh, there seems to be, you know, there's a lot of uh, discussions, and a lot of amongst the people, you know, about madhabs, hadith, and uh, we hear a lot about the madhab versus following the hadith. Could you shed some light on the topic? You know, uh, simply put, for someone like, uh, for just the people. Okay. All right. All right. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Wa sallallahu ala nabi. Thank you very much for hosting me, you and uh, Brother Fahad. I really appreciate it. It's my pleasure and honor. Alhamdulillah. It's always good to meet a Muslim, to meet a person who's seeking knowledge and seeking the truth, inshallah. It's always a pleasure. Second thing is, um, I have to give a shout out to the disciples worldwide. If they're listening live or if they're going to listen later on, give a special shout out to them. Thirdly is, uh, the importance is of paramount, the, the topic is of paramount importance. And it's a very long and lengthy topic. And I think um, one of the best ways of looking at it objectively and, and shedding some serious light upon it is looking at the nature of knowledge and the responsibility of the people of knowledge and the duty uh, and the weight that has been placed upon the people of knowledge. One of the most important things that has been placed upon the uh, bearer of knowledge and the word of knowledge is to spread the knowledge and to teach the knowledge. Uh, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, uh, the one whom uh, some scholars said, uh, they said every virtue that could possibly be attained was given to Abdullah ibn Mubarak. He was knowledgeable. He was a brave warrior. He was a generous spender. He prayed. He was a zahid, abid, ijtama'at, yani all good he had. Abdullah ibn Mubarak and others, they would say, he says, those Muslim scholars who go astray, they have a resemblance of the Yahud. And those Muslim scholars or those Muslim worshippers, the monks, those who are devoted to Ibadah, when they go astray, they have a resemblance of the Nasara. So this goes to show us is that whenever there's a scholar of Islam and he falls into one of those blameworthy traits, that's the cause. And from the most apparent blameworthy uh, traits of those people, Allah says, Do not mix truth with falsehood, nor hinder and hide the truth whilst you know. Listen to these th three pieces in this ayah. Do not mix truth with falsehood, number one. Number two, nor hide the truth. Number three, and you know it. So therefore, when it comes to the Muslim Ummah, there are people, in my humble opinion, willingly or knowingly, or no, uh, whether they know it or not, they mix the truth with falsehood. With regards to madhab versus hadith, hadith versus madhab, taqlid versus ijtihad, ijtihad versus taqlid. And they mix. Number two, there are some people, unfortunately, who know the truth who know what's correct, who know the balanced view, but they hide it because they're afraid or they're scared or whatever the reason is. And you know it's not right. You know that this statement makes no sense. You know Imam Abu Hanifa never ever said that. You know Imam Ahmad Rahimullah forbade the people from writing down his opinions. You know what Imam Malik's stance was, etc. So those are the three tiers. Is don't mix things that don't belong. Oranges and apples don't belong in the same bowl or the same plate. Don't mix them. Okay, a madhab is one thing. And hadith is one thing. Ijtihad is a thing. Taqlid is a thing. All right? Number two, haq. don't hide the truth. This is what Imam Malik said. This is what Shafi'i said. This is what Ahmed did. This is what Abu Hanifa said, so on and so forth. This is what the scholars today, this is what they actually say and what they promote and the values that they give the other scholars, their fellow scholars, students of knowledge, and layman Muslims. Don't hide it. Don't be afraid. Just give the facts to the people and you know it's not right. You know it is wrong to do. So therefore, before we can go any further, we have to separate which was recklessly and sloppily put together. 
and that is the concept of ijtihad, taqlid, madhab, hadith, Abu Hanifa, Malik, Shafi, Zahiri, Ahl al Hadith, Ahl al Hadith, etc. We have to separate it again. And the madhab, without a question, has its place in Islam. And the ulama, whether they're the four imams or others, they have their place in Al Islam. And a hadith of the Prophet, Sallam, it has its ultimate place in Al Islam. It's the ultimate place. Allah tells us, Kitabun unzila ilayka. This is a book that has been sent down to you, O Muhammad. Alaf la mim sa'at. Kitabun unzila ilayka fala yukum fi sadrika harajun minhu litunthara bihi wa dhikra lil mu'mineen. Allah says, Ittabi'u ma unzila ilaykum min rabbikum wa la tattabi'u min duni awliya qalila ma tathakaroon. Follow what has been sent down to you from your Lord and follow nothing else. Qalila ma tathakaroon. Little reflection do you give. Little reflection do you give. So the starting point is the Kitab and the Sunnah. No question about that. Mm-hmm. And obviously the Kitab and the Sunnah, they can be understood and they can be interpreted. Yes. And what passed down and who has knowledge, etc. But the Medheb is not the starting place. Uh, and whoever says uh, that's the starting place, then he has mixed the truth with falsehood. Okay. Uh, that's not okay. okay. So can I... So that, that, wait, continue. Fadl, okay, fadl, finish your point and then I'll ask questions. Continue. The, 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 the point is, is that Many people, they mix things unnecessarily, and I said recklessly, and what? Sloppily. Mm-hmm. All right? So the madhab has its importance, mm-hmm. and the hadith has importance which is greater, mm-hmm. and which is foremost. And the reason why it does is because Allah says, Ma min rabbikum. And the only thing that's been sent down to Muhammad is kitab, is nothing else. Ijma' was not sent down to the Prophet. Qiyas was not sent down to the Prophet. Amal al Medina was not sent down to the prophet. Kitab and Sunnah was sent down and all other proofs and evidences which come first, they spring forth from the Kitab from, and Sunnah. That's right. Okay. So that's a critical mistake. Every Muslim believes this, mm. but the practice is different. That's a critical mistake to start other than the starting point uh, and to mix okay. the two. The Kitab and Sunnah have their place and they are not to be mixed with anything else. Everyone understand this? So that, that's, that's first and foremost. That's first and foremost. Okay. Uh, so yeah, just uh, I think this is a good spot to just follow, uh, ask you a follow-up question. So yeah, Kitab and Sunnah comes first and foremost. Uh, I think we know that. Uh, like We've established that. Uh, so how do we... This kind of goes into... Oh, some, someone might say, how do we interpret the Kitab and Sunnah? Don't we need Usul al-Fiqh to interpret it? Like, do we... Like, you know, Imam Shafi had his Usul. Imam Malik had his Usul. Imam Ahmed had his Usul. And the Zahiri Madhab had their Usul. Like, how do we... Right. Like, yeah. Clear, crystal clear. There's no doubt that there is understanding. The Prophet told the companions not to pray except for in Banu Quraida. Yes. When you get there, make Asr. Mm-hmm. Some took the literal text mm-hmm. and others understood to hasten, to hurry up. So there's there's no doubt. There is an interpretation. The white thread from the black thread. What did the companion understood? He actually understood the literal text. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi never criticized him for taking the literal text. Mm. But he explained to him what was meant. Ammar ibn Yasir, عنه, he told the Prophet what happened to him. He says, I rolled around in the dirt like an animal rolls in the dirt. And the Prophet Sallallahu never criticized him for taking the Zahir concept of Qiyas. The dirt being like the Ghusl. He never criticized him. Mm. But he says, It was only sufficient to do this and to do that. So therefore, interpretation, there's no doubt, it has its place. Interpretation and misinterpretation. No one is fighting with that. Mm-hmm. The imams, they have their different usul. No one is fighting with that. But the problem comes in, number one, in putting the usul in front of the actual text. Number two, is fanatically clinging to the usul of one imam and disregarding the other imam's usul. Mm-hmm. That's a problem, fanaticism. Mm-hmm. Number three, is understanding an auxiliary science Versus the actual goal and destination. Okay, I come from Saudi Arabia to Ohio State University. I want to study medicine. What's the first thing I have to learn? Uh, Pick up a scalpel? No, you got to learn from the doctors. No, I have to learn what? How to be a student. English. English. All right. No doubt. But English isn't my major. I don't want to study English. I don't want to go back to Saudi teachings. I want to be a doctor, a brain surgeon. So the English language is nothing more than a what? Just a medium. That's it. Nothing more. And you don't get stuck upon the medium. And the people, they become fanatical. The people put the mediums before the text. And the people, they get stuck on the medium. And the madhab is nothing more than the medium. Mm-hmm. Nothing right. more. As a Tahawi, the great Hanafi scholar said, mm-hmm. that the scholars of Islam, the fuqaha, they're like the stars in the sky. 
as Allah says in the Quran, you seek guidance through stars. Once you reach the Kaaba, you're in front of the, the, the Kaaba, there's no more compass. There's no more sundown. There's no more, this is the North Star and this is Jupiter. You're in front of the Kaaba, northeast, southeast, west, whatever circular direction you're standing in front of, you do what? You face it. Mm -hmm. So no one is going to say you don't need the stars for navigation. In North America, how do we know the Qibla? Through navigation, through stars, etc. But we're now we're in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. Whoa, whoa, slow down, slow down. You can't pray in front of the Kaaba until you look at the compass. Would you say that? No. No, no. Of course. Except fool. And al Ah, okay. I see. That's, a, that's the same analogy that you they used. Meaning, it leads us to the actual raw and organic text. Mm. How to understand the Kitab and the Sunnah. And that's what all of the Imams said. Khudu min haythu akhadna. Take from where we took. But of course, we're not going to tell someone off the street to open up a party and make HD head. Sure. There's principles. You have to learn. You have to study. But it doesn't mean that that studying and that process is the goal. That's the medium. I learned English for two years. Now I want to learn how to use the scalpel. Because that's what I want to study. And that is the most beneficial people. The beneficial thing for my people in Saudi Arabia, which is surgery, not English. So so once, it, once, once again, it goes back to the concept of a khalt and lepsi mixing things up. And the many people, they mix things up, they become fanatical, and then a tradition is passed on. He said it in a book, then another said it, and a third said it, and then it becomes tradition. Right. Mm -hmm. So, okay, yeah, I, I, I think I understand that. So then, to like, you, you said, like, basically, the method is basically a way to get to the truth, right? Like, in terms of Without learning it, like, learning English to, like, become a doctor, it's the same enough. Right. So it, then I guess I would ask, so like, like you said, each imam, they had like, they had their principles besides the four, right? So how would, mm -hmm. uh, let's say like you, alhamdulillah, you've studied like eight, 10 years in Medina and then you've studied like, uh, I remember listening to your uh, a biography on, on Saj's podcast, uh, other Saj's podcast, where you said uh, you studied from like, like your mid teen years and all the way until now, alhamdulillah. So how like, for example, would someone determine which principles are correct? You know, for example, Imam Ahmed preferred a da'if hadith before Qiyas. But Imam al-Shafi, he didn't have such a principle. So, like, as a student of knowledge, would you start with one of the set of principles and study the other set? Or what would you do? Uh, crystal clear. Crystal clear. I would say um, that the imams had different principles, as we know. And we have to understand what those principles are. It goes back to the previous discussion. Those principles were nothing other than a medium to understanding Allah and his messengers intended mean it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's why Malik said Ahmad al Medina because the people of Medina were connected to Sahaba. Mm -hmm. And the Sahaba was connected to who? Uh Qiyas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Al Istihsan. All of those subsidiary proofs and evidences, yes. they're helping yes. you go back to the truth yes. and the intended yes. meaning of Allah and His Messenger. Yes. That's number yes. one. Number two, a lot of confusion before we get into this specific thing. They mix between a mujtahid, a mutabi and the Muqallid. Yeah. So, uh, can you and that's define those for the problem. audience real quick? Yeah. Mujtahid is someone who is independent. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's independent jurist. What is the ruling on drinking seltzer water? He looks into the Quran, he looks into the books of Hadith, and he determines his own ruling. It's makruh to drink seltzer water. Mm -hmm. That's Mujtahid, yeah. That's Check mujtahid. Out the Sabbath, for example. It, it, anyone, whoever. I, I, don't have to, I, don't have to, I don't have to ask you your opinion or your view. Mm -hmm. Number two is a mutabir, is one who isn't a master. He's not independent, nor is he a beginner. He has the ability to look into the statements of the mujtahideen mm. and look at their proofs and their reasoning and their arguments and then determine he's stronger. So that's like a student of knowledge. That has a, is of a certain like level, a, like yes. A, like a high... You have the ammi, the muqallid. Yeah. His yeah. job is to ask the scholar that he trusts and respects. Mm -hmm. Wherever he is, whatever madhab he is, the one that I look at this sheikh, I think he's righteous. Mm. Allah knows best what he does behind closed doors, but I think he's righteous. And I've seen him speak, and I know his credentials. I think he's strong. Yes, sheikh, what is your advice on drinking seltzer water? Mm. And right. he says, la bas. Jazakallah khair. Bismillah. Okay. You understand? Yeah. There, are three levels, there are three levels here. A huge problem are speakers and Muslim callers not differentiating between these three levels. Right. And that goes back to al-khalt and lips mixing and jumbling things recklessly and sloppily. Are you saying this? Mm -hmm. So the scholars of Islam, they say, number one, the mujtahid is haram for him to make taqlid if he has the ability to think and look himself. Mm -hmm. The mutabit, 
cannot make taqlid if he can decipher himself. And the general nine to five Muslim, most of the scholars hold the view, not all of them, but most of them say his job is to ask the scholar or ask the Sunnah Malaj whom he trusts. Mm -hmm. However, it's a very important cliche that they have in Arabic. They say, They say, a day must come in which a layman person is independent. And a day must come in which an independent jurist is a layman. Meaning, you may not have the time to research. Or it may be too difficult or too scary or whatever the case may be. And you have to, Shafi'i qala bihi, tayyib. Qad jawa ajazahu shafi'i. Because there's no time to make ijtihad in this situation. So why not follow a great tremendous scholar? And a layman Muslim has to decipher when there are different views and opinions. Yeah, that, yeah. He has to use yeah, was, his mind and head what makes sense. So that's when we get to the specific part of the, the question here is how to determine which usul to take. Well, the student of knowledge, uh, first and foremost, is sincerity. Mm -hmm. And the same applies to the layman Muslim. Sincerity. If you're sincere, Allah will protect you from many things. And we know that the Prophet said he would make the dua before he went to sleep, as Aisha narrated. He would ask Allah to guide him. Mm -hmm. Oh, Allah, guide me to which that which the people fight and differ over. Mm -hmm. Guide me to the truth. Indeed, you guide to a straight path. How many of us are making that dua before we go to sleep? How many of us? And then we talk about Khilaf, Ben Baz, Shafi, Abu Hanifa, Fulan, Fulan, Fulan. But are we making that dua? Are we sincere for the truth? Number two is common sense common sense and the power of the fitra and the power of the gut the intuition is a very strong um, innate uh, power that Allah has placed in the human being it says seek it from your heart no matter what they tell you and look at the story of Salman how much knowledge did he have he didn't have a lot of knowledge but he knew that something was wrong with worshipping the fire and he knew that it didn't make sense what these people were doing in Persia and this group and that group until he went and he found the Prophet. So sincerity, common sense, knowing the fundamentals yourself. And you don't have to be a scholar to learn the fundamentals, nor do you have to study a madhab to understand the basic fundamentals. Right. The basic fundamentals. Last but not least is go with whom you trust. I don't know what the people are saying. Shafi, Hanafi, I don't know, but I know Brother Fahd, I, I trust him. He seems like a good guy. I went to school with him. I never seen him do anything wrong. I never seen him doing some haram stuff. So, you know, Fahd, what do you think? And I trust him. He may be wrong. He may mislead me, but I trust him. And I've used my own sincerity. Allah guide me. Mm -hmm. I've used common sense. I've thought about it. Mm -hmm. And I'm still not sure. And I know the basic fundamentals. Now I'm going to ask someone that I trust. These are the four golden principles for a layman Muslim. Muslim. Or which fatwa to take. What scholar to listen to. Which dawah organization to go towards. Because these questions, they keep coming up over and over. Everyone says Quran and Sunnah. Everyone says the, the way of the pious predecessors. Everyone says that they're following the ulama. Mm -hmm. Are you sincere? Yeah. Most people, they're not sincere. And Allah knows mm -hmm. best. They're just following it because it's convenient. Or they're scared of the harm of being warned against and talked about. Mm -hmm. So they really don't have the true sincerity in their heart. Mm -hmm. Number two, they're not using their brains. How can you say this is Islam? How can you say this is what Abu Hanifa would say and do? And it's crazy. It's reckless. Shafi, Rahim Allah, he would never ever tell the people to do an act like this. And last but not least, the, 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 before last but not least, the principles, common sense, basic principles of usul al-fiqh that every Muslim should know about. And they're basic fiqh principles that every Muslim what should know about and then go with whom what you trust. So that's going to determine if you're in North Africa or you're in Mauritania or Senegal and you're studying and you don't know much, you're going to end up studying Maliki fiqh. Mm -hmm. And if you're in Turkey, you will end up studying Hanafi fiqh. And if you're in Palestine or this country, what well, heck is that? But the problem comes in, what do you mean by I'm Maliki? Meaning I never learned about this hadith, I never heard this text. I come from Morocco, and this is how I was taught. La best. But now you are a scholar, you're learned, the proof is clear, plain, lucid, right in front of you. You can't say, and I'm Maliki. Mm -hmm. Now it's impermissible to say you're Maliki, and it's a bid'ah to be Maliki. As far as the proof isn't clear to you, I study Maliki principles. I study Maliki fiqh. La best. I don't have the time to study. I'm a nine to five working Muslim. La best. I come from North Africa. I come from Morocco. This is the fiqh that I was taught. Why do I trust this scholars there? But now the proof is clear to you in front of your face. And there's no mu'arada. There's nothing that objects to this proof. You can't say, I'm Shafi. So I don't have to take that proof. The Prophet said clearly raised his hands. The Prophet moved his finger to shout. The Prophet, the Prophet, whatever the issue is, whatever example you mentioned, mm. 
And the proof with a condition that is what? Clear. Clear. With the concept of Hatta Yetabayan Alakum, Allah says, until the threads are made clear. And that's why some of the women say that you can eat and drink even after the time if it isn't clear to you. I don't think this is time for Fajr yet. I think this prayer schedule is wrong based off of the knowledge. Yetabayana, it says. Yetabayana. Still clear. Without a doubt. Mm -hmm. So the problem with the Methabs comes in knowing about it versus not knowing about it. And also the fanaticism. Abu Hanifa is the greatest. Malik is the greatest. Ahmed is the greatest. Shafi'i is the greatest. Whoever doesn't study a madhab can't get fiqh. He's zahid. He's kada. Ihtiqar. Mm -hmm. The Prophet ﷺ says, Bi hasbi murin min ash-shar an yahkira akhahu al-Muslim. So scorn your brother. A person says, I want to study the hadith directly. Ah, you can't. You have to. You have to. It's disrespectful and it's scorning a Muslim. Mm -hmm. So we have fanaticism. We have extremism. We have mixing. And we have people that aren't sincere. What do you mean? What do you mean by mixing? Mixing principles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like we just said, mixing a principle. Okay. Uh, the concept of of making a mujtahid behave like a munqallid, like many people do. Right. You have the ability to read yourself, even within the madhab. Yeah. Because there's difference of opinion yep, in the madhab. Yep. You have the ability to read the mu'tamid of Shafi. This is what Shafi said. Nas. Mm -hmm. He said, "I'll go with." Uh, 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 no way, or Imam al Haramain, or this one, or that one. Yeah, yeah. Within the madhab. The yeah. mujtahid yeah. has to behave like a layman. He has to think and use his own independence. Mm -hmm. And that's why many of the ulama they said that the Qadi can be a muqallid. He must be mujtahid. And they made conditions for the Muslim ruler. He has to be mujtahid. He has to be qadirun al istikhraj al ahkam. He has to be able to extract the proofs and evidences by, his, by himself. And it doesn't mean that you don't use the statements of the ulama. It doesn't mean yeah. that. It doesn't mean you abandon it doesn't mean it. as well. Hadha huwa. So balance. Yeah. Balance. And not mixing an apple with an orange. And they don't go together. Right. So these are very, very important principles for the yeah, layman. Yeah. Let alone for the well. Yeah. Student yeah. knowledge. The layman. And the layman shouldn't behave like yep. the scholar. And we should just pick up a book. Oh, fulan, khalas. La, la. Especially if it pertains to someone's blood. If it pertains to the concept of marriage, divorce, money, wealth, the honor of a Muslim, these are very dangerous issues, the ulama say. So a layman should not behave like a scholar. A scholar should not behave like a what? Like a, like a layman. And the one who's in the middle, he should aspire. And you can't aspire if you say you have to be a muqallid for 20 years. That's not helping you grow. Yeah, yeah so like a good example, Sheikh, for example, like let's say I'm a layman and I've been studying like, like Hanbali, for example, Methodan, right? And I attend a halaqa with another sheikh that I trust. And he teaches me some, some shafi fiqh with proofs and evidences. If I'm convinced, mm -hmm. like, let's say in one, the first Hanbali position, for example, it was, it was an issue of, uh, like any issue, but let's say like, is like break, touching your wife with desire, breaking wudu, right? Something like that. And I, I learned the shafi one from another sheikh, right? Is it like, is it, it would be acceptable if I'm, if he brings me the proofs and evidences and I'm convinced to accept that, or do I stick with what? My previous chef taught me. Given I trust both. Clear. Clear. Some of the ulama, they call this mas'al to talfiq. A talfiq. Mean, meaning mixing methods. Yeah, so is that wrong? I don't see anything wrong with it myself. And I think that the most important principle is what's clear. I have a general system. Like I said, I lived, I'm, I'm Moroccan. I come from Algeria. Mm. Maliki fiqh. Okay. However, the call of Shafi in this mas'ala is aq. Mm-hmm. Abu Hanifa, in this masala, he has a better view than Malik. There's no doubt. It's like life. It's like life. And he's talking about Japanese culture. A person likes Japanese foods, Japanese clothes, Japanese culture, etc. But in this issue, I feel that Chinese have a better view on it. Right. So no one in their right mind is going to say, I have to stick to the Japanese way. And that's provided you learn it correctly, right? It's not like just fatwa shopping. Like this is given sincerity, like ikhlas. Like I just said, like I just said, and it depends on the level of yes. ilm, the student versus the layman, the lay. Well, how can that? You understand what I'm saying to you? But the concept of picking and choosing, as long as it's done with sincerity and it's not based off of tatabu or ruchas, the ulama say, and which you, which people call in America fatwa yeah. shopping, like whatever it's convenient. Yes, but it does not mean that you cannot take a view that suits your desires. It doesn't mean that I can't take a view that suits my. I desire. want to drink the seltzer water. Yeah, I want to. It looks good. It looks refreshing. So you should take the. So I'm going to look into the proofs and evidences. Right. 
it makes sense to me that it's permissible. Alhamdulillah. And this is what we call ittiba al arshad or ittiba al ahwa. Mm. What's most precautious or what's strongest? What what could you right. go with? What's most precautious or what's most strongest? Oh, the stronger without a question. Strongest, yeah. And that's the bounty of Allah. Yeah. I, when I researched, I didn't research looking for a fatwa to drink the seltzer water. But it actually became clear to me that there's nothing what? Nothing wrong. That goes against yeah. it. So why make things difficult? Yeah. Unnecessarily. You don't have, we're not, it's not a different religion in which we place assault, hardships, and fetters upon our hands and necks. Nah. The Prophet's description in those previous books, well, you hinder them, I'll you bet. Makes lawful for them the lawful things, the tayyibat, the good things. The fetters and the chains that were on them, he removes them. So it's all based off intention, sincerity. So you don't have to be loyal to a madhab per se. No, no. And if so, what's the proof for that? Yeah, that's. And how dangerous is that? There's a new set of laws that you follow from A to Z. It's ludicrous. Mm-hmm. Right. It's but ludicrous. then, Chef, some people might say, oh, well, if you just use yep. lo- like your logic, you'll just go with what's convenient subconsciously. No, yeah. no, not necessarily. Let alone, let alone the fact that we live in America. It's not Morocco, in which everyone is following one yeah. method. Everyone is on one teaching. This is the United States. It's a melting pot. But he's saying that, like, well, won't people just follow their hawa? Not necessarily, yeah. no. no. And if they do, that's their fault and not the fault of the system. I agree with that, yeah. Like, yeah, I think if you're, like you said, ikhlas, sincerity, and you're... And chef, okay, so then that, that's for a layman, right? But let's say if you're like at a student of knowledge level, when you're getting, when you're discussing different... Because people say, when you mix positions, they say, well, it's from different principles. So how would you determine the different principles are correct? Through studying, is that right? Compared to fiqh. Compared, compared to fiqh, compared to fiqh. okay. And without a question about that. And the fiqh al-maqarin, it, ex- it stands on the following principles. Number one is... Al-Ittila'u'l-Wasir. Vast, in-depth reading. You have to know about the hadiths, about the texts. Okay? And that's why the ulama, they wrote, Kutub ahadith al ahkam Reading Umdut al ahkam is not reading Muntaq al-Akbar. Right. Muntaq al-Akbar is a huge book versus Umdut al ahkam Muntaq al-Akbar is not like Bulug Maram. Muntaq al-Akbar is not like you reading the Muatta. Yes. You understand this? Mm-hmm. Number two, usul fiqh. Number three is usul al hadith. Number four is lugh al arabiya wa ulumuha. Okay, so you have these general principles. The hadith that says, Men ja'a minkum al jum'ata fal yaghtasib. Whoever goes to Jum'ah has to wash. Yeah. So let's say, hypothetically speaking, this hypothetical example, Maliki Madhab says, women don't have to make a ghusl when they go to Jum'ah, but men do. Methanin, okay. as an example. And I studied Maliki Fiqh. I come from Morocco my whole life. But now I've reached a level of knowledge in which I want to be independent. So I'm now going out of the Maliki Method and I'm saying a woman has to wash too. Why? Because of the principles of comparative Fiqh. And those principles are al al Arabiya and Al-Usul. Men. Mm. And men is from Siyag al Umum. And there's no proof specifying that it has to be a man and not a woman. Yeah. You understand? So you're loyal only to those principles. Right. Only to those principles. There is no one form that you're stuck to. So if you understand those principles, uh, that you read the Dalil and come across it, you've read and you've studied them. Number two is what we said, what? Huh? We said, Usul al Fiqh, Usul al Hadith. This view that Imam, uh, uh, whoever based their view off of, is weak. Mm-hmm. And that's his asal. He says that you can use it, that's fine. But I don't believe that you make amal with the Hadith. Lam yathbut ala Nabi sallallahu and then I use the lugha. You understand what I'm saying to you? And you compare and you take the bests from all of the madhabs and their strengths cancel out their weaknesses. Let's talk about uh, 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 UFC. Mixed martial arts. What style do I use? American boxing, Shaolin uh, boxing. Do I use judo? Do I use... Uh, uh, Jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu. No, you take the what? Take the best. Because all of those styles have strengths, and they also all have what? Weaknesses. Weaknesses, and those, most importantly, they were made for a time and a place. There's no ceremonial, this is, you're in the street, someone is trying to mug you. You have 10 seconds to defend yourself or become victimized. There's no bowing and ceremonial, That's that was in ancient Japan. 
that was in Thailand, that was in this part of Africa, that was in this part of India. So you take the best and you combine, and most money the principles. And what's the principles? Is to survive and to win this fight. Mm -hmm. Just like, think about that example. It's like trying to find the truth. What other question? Yeah. And of course, you're not going to be loyal to just one system, because there's no one system that's going to have every single thing correct. Mm, besides, that, so but if you choose, if you choose not to do that, it says I I I, I study Muay Thai. Mm. I understand that there's a benefit in this, but I'm going to stick with Muay Thai. I don't want to be a, a jack of all trades and a master of none. That's fine, but it doesn't mean that that's min azmin umur. That's mm -hmm. the top level, mm -hmm. and that's what we believe. And we could be wrong in this, and without dis without disrespecting anyone else, we believe that comparative fiqh is the strongest and most thorough way of studying fiqh. No, no question about that. Comparative fiqh that's based off of the hadith directly. That, that's the strongest way, mm -hmm. and I think that I don't think that a person with good sense is going to reject that example or that metaphor or whatever you wish to call it. This is not, we're not in ancient Japan yeah. anymore. This is someone who's mugging you in a dark alley. You have to defend yourself and defend yourself properly with the most efficient and effective way. Yeah, I, yeah that's, that's a pretty long thing. So then, Chef, would this mean like, so for example, in your case, different methods. You know, different methods are different methods. No. Hack, exactly. Yeah, Literally, no, no, yes. yeah, so I wanted mm -hmm. to ask, uh, like, in, like in your case, for example, like you, I know, like, you're big on, like, your hadith, right? So, but when it comes to, like, the, like you said, the things that are binding, right? Like, usul, like, al-lugh al uh, Are those things, like, specific to the imam? Like, for example, like, let's say I, I studied hanbali usul, and then I, I decide to study hadith. Would I be sticking to the hanbali usul as mm -hmm. I study hadith? Uh, so, like, for example, like, let's say I studied, uh, like, the hanbali method, right? And then I, I go open, like, a mm -hmm. shat, like... Uh, I open like Bulugh al Maram, for example, which is like, like I think it's used in, a lot in the Shafi field as well, if I'm not mistaken. Right? Clear. And let's say, so now when I study those hadith, these principles that I learned from the Hanbali Madhab, like the Usul, for example. Clear, right. clear, crystal clear. It's fine. But, but the hadiths are not understood in one specific lens. Well, that's, that's, yeah, that's my problem. question. Like, how are the hadith understood? People there, they're interpreting the hadiths hatta tatawafaq ma'al madhab. In which the madhab can't be wrong. And the madhab, the hadith is interpreted, an in interpretation. So the, also, the hadith is interpreted to confirm the madhab. That, that is yes, a problem. That's a problem. Yeah. And it's supposed that's to be confirmation bias. Yes. Yes, there you go. It's supposed to be the opposite. Right. You're a tadhar lil madhab. Yeah. We make an excuse for the madhab. Maybe Ahmed didn't hear of the dalil. Or maybe the Hamali scholars took another proof or another yeah. principle. Mumkin. But this hadith is sahihun, sarihun, wa laysa lahu, laysa hunak shayun, you aridhu, you kawimuhu, you sawihi. There's nothing equal to it or stronger than it. Wajib al akhduhi. You have to take it. There's no option. And if you say that there is an option and I can do it, then obviously there's a problem with your Islam. Huge problem with your Islam. Let alone the fact that the hypocrisy of the different madhabs and of the people of the different madhabs. Imam Ahmed, how strict and stringent was he with regards to this issue? Imam Ahmed was so strict, he wouldn't allow anyone to write down the tafsir of the hadith along with the hadith. He said, put it in a different book, a separate book. Because look what can happen. And if people start taking the sharh and make the sharh over the what? The, over the, the actual yeah. text. Right. Yeah. And that's, a, that's, a, that's a problem. That's a huge yeah. problem. And the same Abu Hanifa, his statements are well known. They're documented. Malik's statements are well known. They're documented. Shafi's positions well, are what? Extremely well known. The famous statement on the man asked him, so he says, do you hold this view? What, how angry did Shafi become? He says, do you see me wearing this? Am I dressed like this? Did I come out of a church or a synagogue? How dare you ask me? So, so that's the asl. But of course, there are levels of understanding. The layman is not like the scholar. Scholar is not like the layman. There are levels to it. And there's a balance. But the problem is having a full cup, okay? And people uh, looking at data and, and investigating with a theory and an opinion already. Yeah, they're just looking for confirmation bias. That's and like the whole thing, empty your cup. Yeah, empty your cup. Yeah, oh, that's I brilliant. <laughs> right, keep an open mind, yeah? That's right. And when you're studying, there's a difference between studying it, teaching it, and practicing it. So I'll give you an example of myself. Right. Let's say, for example... I'm in the mood or the time. I'm, I just want to read fiqh. I want to read a book of Hanafi fiqh. I don't want to hear no proofs and evidences. I want to just read what they're saying. 
And then I'm reading a book, Sayyid Bukhari. I'm not thinking about Abu Hanifa. I'm just reading what it states in front of me. When I teach it or practice it, that's a different story. And that's why the scholars of Hadith, they would say, إِذَا سَمِعْتَ فَقَمِّشْ وَإِذَا حَدَّثْتَ فَفَتِّشْ He says, whenever you hear the Hadith, فَقَمِّشْ Swallow all of them up, soak them up. Mm-hmm. And when you teach them and pass them on, فَفَتِّشْ Decipher. Clean them up. And you pick which ones should be given. So learning it, you empty your cup. I want to learn everything I can from this book. I have a scholar who's Maliki. He's a blind follower fanatic. I want to learn everything I can from him. It doesn't mean that I have to believe in it and accept it. And it doesn't mean that that's the truth, but I'm learning from him. And then I learn from another source. And then I produce what's what? Correct in my mm-hmm. humble based opinion. On, yeah. In my humble opinion. That's right. Based off of the principles and nothing yeah. else other than the principles. And the, yeah, and the principles, like you mentioned. So I think, I think that's the most, uh, yani, khayrun wa ahsanu ta'wilan. I think that's better. And final determination, like the example I gave of yeah. mixed martial arts. For sure. I that is a brilliant example. example like, be. Because, because the end goal is to beat up the other guy, right? That's but, it. But you're using you're using these different methods in order to beat up the other guy. Or you're using these different martial arts to beat up the other guy. So the analogy, it, it works. Yeah. Huh, okay. So, so uh, that's not, that's pretty good. I think I've... Uh, I think, yeah. That's good. No, no, yeah, yeah. So I'll just wrap up with this and we'll transition to... Uh, the book he carries. Uh, uh, oh man! Yeah. Okay, sure. We'll, we'll, we'll hold off on that. Uh, but okay, as a layman, let's say you, uh, let's say you, uh, you started learning Arabic. You finished like the Medina books, okay. and you want to learn. Uh, you want to understand. Uh, you want to fit deen, okay? And you make dua, and you're learning. You know, you're learning the Quran. You're attending the classes. Like, what are some, uh, you know, books so we should, or someone should read, or what are like what should a person do to like transition. Yeah, clear. Talk, talking. Are you uh, Amar? Are you trying to talk about like making? A no, no, no. I'm asking. Yeah, I'm asking like what should like, if I if I want to be a, if I want to transition from a student of knowledge to I mean transition from a layman to a student of knowledge. Like for example, I can read. I can look. I can open a book and look at the opinions of the different imams and you know practice taqlid mutlaq, right? Be sincere, right? Follow like what I like what I'm sincere in. But I'm saying I want to transition to like the next step. Yeah, crystal clear. You gotta have a teacher, someone mm-hmm. to guide you. And if you don't have a teacher, then take the smallest and easiest book. Which would be what? Start with it. In like... there, there are many. Akhsar al-Muqtasarat is an excellent source. Dur al is an excellent source. There are many small mutun that have been made in Babit Tasheel. You see what I'm saying to you? And I, my advice is the leanest book. The oh. leanest and the easiest book. If I had to pick one, I would say Dur al without a question. Dur al There's no doubt about that. If you look at Yes, it's a lean cut of steak. It's no fat. What, no bone, what is it? Is it no is it of fiqh or is it aqidah? What is it? Actual fiqh. Actual fiqh. Actual oh. fiqh. Without a question. But there's no question about that. Lean. Yeah. You have to start off lean. Mm-hmm. You have to start off slow. Right. And then you gradually grow and develop. If you have a teacher, then of course, under the guidance of that teacher. And if you don't, if you're self-taught, which is not a crime or a sin, because some people don't have teachers, you have to figure it out as you go along. But eventually, you have to understand that you need a teacher. You have to have someone to show you the way. For sure. Mm-hmm. Well, you want to, you, do you think you can hit it within like maybe five, ten minutes? Why you keep this book everywhere? <laughs> Allah, I won't stop. Is it really that You guys long? are trying to get me trapped <laughs> now. <laughs> uh, or we could just... I, 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 yeah. I, I would say this. Like I told you before, uh, alhamdulillah, you know, I grew up in a, a very interesting household. Okay, my mother, my my father was a martial artist, and my mother was f- in love and obsession with East India. Okay. Yeah, so we all in the household. We were Americans, we were Black Americans, we were Muslims, but it was always international. Foods, you know, I had a wealth of books in my house, and I always had a love for martial arts. I used to do it. I used to practice it when I was younger. My father would train me, and you know, I always had a love for it. And as as older I the older I got, and the more books that I read, uh, I fell I would say more in love with the quote unquote the word I want to use philosophy. Obviously, philosophy is a a dangerous word. Or people don't like to use that word, of course. Yeah, especially in Muslim circles. Yeah, and I I don't see the term being problematic. Philosophy to me is a way of looking at life. For sure. How you approach a thing. My philosophy of eating dinner. I start off with soup. 
You see what I'm saying? You're not questioning God. And no, we're not talking about that stuff. Yeah. At the end of the day, I fell in love with the mindset. The mindset, the mental aspect of it, okay? And translating that as a Muslim, of course, mm-hmm. first and foremost, and survive in America and survive in the inner city, in the streets of Philadelphia, the concept of mental sharpness. So let's say you take a book, which is which is even more popular and famous than uh, Golden No Show, The Book of Five Rings. Let's say Sun Tzu's famous treatise, The Art of War. The Art of War is applicable to so many aspects of life. You understand what I'm saying to you? Being prepared, uh, never scorning your opponent, uh, being prepared for the unpredictable. Okay, these are principles which are golden. Timeless, Lindy. Golden for, for a business setting, for a marriage, whatever you're doing in life, okay? And there are other books and other works that I feel have those principles as well. And of course, there are things which are totally, totally contradictory to Islam and things which must be weeded out. And Obviously. sifted through. No question about that. No doubt about that. And I'll say that openly and publicly, whether it's Buddhism or other things besides that. All right? Taoism or any other type of ism which is against the ism of Kitab and Sunnah. For sure. It's just that that simple. The ism of the book and the Sunnah. Whatever type of ism, confusion, whatever ism you wish to use, okay? But the principles of the concept of self-sacrifice, overpowering yourself before you even think about what? Overpowering others. In the translation, not this translation, this is Thomas Cleary's translation, uh, uh, but uh, the, the, another translation of the Book of Five Rings. He mentions, he says, today is victory over yourself of yesterday, and tomorrow is victory over lesser men. That's a tremendous statement yeah. in the life of a Muslim. Today yeah. is victory over yourself of what? Of yesterday. yesterday. Meaning your sinful self, your heedless self, your ignorant self, your impulsive self. Now you're better. And tomorrow, by Allah's permission, is inshallah, could be victory over what? Lesser men. Conquering a physical opponent after you yourself have what? Been conquered you. yourself. And that's why some uh, circles of uh, Budo or nin- uh, Ninjutsu, they uh, give the title to a man uh, who's reached a level of mastery called Hanshi. And the Hanshi cannot be less, or he cannot be younger than 40. And that's very interesting looking at the time in which the what? The prophet received revelation. Uh-huh. And what the ulama say about 40 being the peak of your mental development. That's You're not too old. Your body is not too weak and slow and decrepit. And your mind is still razor sharp. And it's beginning to obtain savvy and more knowledge and more wisdom. So a hanchi has to be 40. And the reason why they say it is he cannot take a student or a disciple until he himself has what? Mastered himself. That's, that's paramount in the life of the Muslim. How you want to be a husband and you can't even be mm-hmm. a Muslim to yourself? Mm-hmm. You have to be a yeah. upon yourself. For sure. Your children. Let alone you want to be a tough guy and conquer men. You have to yeah, be able can. to have control. If you don't have it together yourself. Where it all starts. Yeah, master yourself before mastering. No question. And, there, and there's so many other principles with regards to life, with regards to strategy, and looking at life as, from this one book, a sword fight. Something which is dangerous, mm. something which is very uh, dreadful and deathful, and one small mistake or slip could cost you your life. As he said, you have a man swinging a four foot razor blade at you. There's no room for mistakes. For sure. That's my philosophy when it comes to learning and studying and teaching. There's no room to make an error. A man swinging a four foot razor blade, one act of unconsciousness or heedlessness, or you're distracted and you're done. Yeah. So living life like that, being conscious, being aware, having mental sharpness, taking it serious, taking training serious, and I apply that to ilm and hadith disciple, is that it's not a joke, it's serious. We talk about reading the books of hadith, studying, learning Arabic, going overseas, memorizing the Quran. Mm -hmm. It's not a joke. And the same applies to if you have to debate, and if you have to defend Islam, and if you have to defend the Sunnah, if you have to, I said, not just making, picking fights, but if you have to, your opponent should be what? No question. In the quickest, simplest, yeah. most efficient manner. For sure. For sure. So these are just some of the principles. Some, not all, there are many others that I that I find in, in extremely interesting and mind-boggling yeah. and spine-tingling in this book and other books as well. The Book of Five Rings by The Book Miyama. of Five Rings by Mount Tumashi. Is that the one? And The Art of War as well? Yeah. yeah. One among others. If you guys... Yeah, but if, if you can see the book right now, the book looks like it's worn out. <laughs> It's uh, Subhanallah. If I had it's, all, to... it's all kind of like like Taped wrinkled up. up. Huh? 
It's all taped up and uh, it looks like it's been read quite a bit. This is a That's later a version. I have others that are older. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I, and I can say this, not bragging, but taking pride in Allah's blessings, alhamdulillah, I have a wealth of books, alhamdulillah, and Arabic books, English books, and I have a wealth of books with regards to what they call Eastern thought right. slash philosophy or slash martial arts. And alhamdulillah, just alone of Sun Tzu's book, Oh, the art of I war. don't know how many commentaries I need to get and that book. I have. Nice. Yeah. That was on my list. Yeah, people who haven't read the book, don't read the book. We're talking about different versions. Just like this fit, this metan of fiqh, yeah. this hashia, and this ikhtisar, <laughs> and this the poetry version. That's how yeah. we... Yeah, you know what I'm saying to you? Yeah. And, you know, but the most important thing is, is, is just like the fiqh, is extracting what's useless, taking what's useful, and then creating and building what? Your own. Your own. And these are some yeah. of the last piece of advice that my father gave before he passed away. Before oh, yeah. he died of cancer. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I discovered later on that he knew he was dying. I didn't know he was sick at the time. He hid it from us. Oh. He knew he was dying, and I it took me years later to realize that that was his final piece of advice to me, his only son. Mm. And ever since then, that's been my motto in life. Uh, study, research, take what's useful, discard what's useless, and make your own style, create your own way. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, that's, a, that's pretty Allah. deep. Carving your, carving your own way, bro. That's a. You think it's a good place to wrap up? The guys are the guys it's outside. True. His whole uh, his whole gang, his whole crew is uh, yeah, waiting. You gotta for, take you know, them. So uh, we gotta run. All right, yeah. Uh, Hopefully, this won't be the last time we meet up. Inshallah. Oh, inshallah. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you wanna wrap up, Bahad? Do more, yeah, inshallah. more online. We'll connect so. thoughts. For sure. For but sure. Like, sure. It was my pleasure. No, I... Uh, yeah, Sorry if I was, was talking our honor fast and rushing, but you know... No, this was, it was wonderful. You give, you it know? was wonderful. Inshallah, I have other meetings, and hopefully we meet up with you. Inshallah, yeah. For sure. Is that the love We We wrap up always with Asrud uh, Asr, so Bismillah ar-Rahman right. ar-Rahim. والعصر إن الإنسان لا في خصر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصدق الله العظيم. جزاكم الله خيرا. جزاكم الله خير. السلام عليكم.